In our previous how-to video, you saw us delid this 13900K, and in this video, we'll be taking a look at what options you have to do with it. So we have a direct die upgrade kit, the direct die equipped nickel plexi block, and lastly, if direct die is a bit too much for you, we also have the ILM replacement, uh, which you would keep the IHS on, and this one just basically gets installed on the motherboard. Creating the perfect PC build has never been easier. Find everything you need on our Shop the Loop page, from inspiration to realization. Your new custom loop is just one click away. Visit ekwb.com. So we'll look at the contents of all of these, how to tell them apart, what the differences are, everything that's included, and we will mount this on a motherboard so you can see how it goes. Uh, first, we'll take a look at the upgrade kit. So firstly, you have the mounting screws and protection for the CPU itself. Under the next layer, you'll find the cold plate, O-ring, and jet plate. And at the very bottom is the back plate and the die guard, which is pre-installed there. So uh, this goes onto the motherboard and holds the CPU in place. And this gets installed onto the block which you are upgrading. Uh, you can upgrade any velocity to or momentum to to use this. And lastly, uh, there are two different protections inside, one for 12th gen chips and one for 13th gen chips and all of the screws you need to put everything together. Uh, you also have in all of the direct die pro products, Thermal Grizzly Conductor Knot, and that's the appropriate paste to use uh, for the dies themselves. Uh, by contrast, if you purchase the entire block, then more of these pieces come pre-assembled. You, of course, still get a package of Thermal Grizzly Conductor Note. Here is the block itself, which is pre-installed with the direct die cold plate, the die guard, and the direct die specific backplate. So uh, in this, we only offer a nickel plexi version, and with the upgrade kit, you could build any velocity too, so you could put this on a gold one, or a satin one, or an acetal one. With this, you can save a little bit and have everything pre-assembled, so you won't discard a cold plate uh, and you won't buy any component twice. Uh, it also comes with the same protective foam for the CPU itself and everything that you need, with exception of the uh, deleting tool, which you saw in the first video. And the last product we're going to look at is the ILM replacement kit for those of you who don't want to go through the risky process of deleting. You can also get a performance benefit by using this part, which is a replacement frame for the uh, loading mechanism that comes on the motherboard. It comes with the same uh, really extra thick rigid backplate that you would have on the direct die kits. Uh, and this really reinforces the motherboard from the front and the back. Uh, it prevents the socket from distorting, and most importantly, it keeps the IHS as flat as possible so you get the best contact from ordinary thermal paste, and that's what supplied uh, Thermal Grizzly Hydronaut, along with uh, the Allen keys to install everything. Uh, so one question that we get a lot are the differences between the frame provided as part of the ILM replacement and the frame provided with the direct die products. So on the left, we have the contact frame, and this is for use with the IHS. You can see it has a very small chamfer on the inside edge because it fits tightly against the contact patch of the IHS. And on the right, we have the die guard, which has a very big chamfer, and that's to help the cold plate actually come inside where it comes down and contacts the die directly. Uh, we can also take them apart and check the difference on the inside. 
And now we can also take a look on the inside. So again, the contact frame on the inside has a smooth face with clearances for the uh, wings of the IHS that normally touch the uh, loading mechanism. And the die guard on the inside has the same pattern as the bottom of the IHS. And you can see again uh, where the wings are filled in and then there's a very small clearance around the outside for all of the SMDs on the various 12th and 13th gen processors. The back plate that's used by the contact frame and the die guard are absolutely identical. They have the same screws, same threads, same hole spacing, and you can also use the same screws from both. Uh, so if you find yourself mixing up parts, then the uh, contact frames and the die guard are not interchangeable, but all of the back plates are exactly the same. So the first thing we're going to do is upgrade this regular Nickel Plexi LGA 1700 block to direct die. If you already have the direct die block, then you can skip over this. So the process is very simple. With the back plate removed, we're going to remove the four screws of the cold plate and attach the new cold plate and jet plate. Just pay attention to the position of the cold plate and where the indexing triangle is and make sure that your new cold plate is going to go back in the same place. Okay, so with the screws removed, the old cold plate and o-ring along with the jet plate will lift off and you can keep those should you ever want to return to non-direct die cooling and then the new cold plate check that it has its o-ring correctly installed and the uh, jet plate should fit with the rounded side facing the fins uh, so it's flat on the top once inserted and then this will mate up to the block again make sure that the indexing triangle is where you left it the uh, Cold plate should quite clearly have its contact patch oriented vertically compared with the side that has lights on it. You can't rotate that because the screws are slightly rectangular and the fins would not be uh, perpendicular to the jet plate. Okay, so this block is now upgraded to direct die in the exact same way as a nickel plexi direct die block. We also have the back plate, which we will need to remove the die guard from. Okay, so now we need a motherboard to install the new back plate onto. And to do that, we will also have to remove the original Intel loading mechanism. Uh, to do that, simply release it right away. You can put the CPU there already just to protect things, but don't forget that you've done it. So that will prevent you from dropping anything inside the socket and make sure that the lever is released and there is no tension on any parts of the loading mechanism or the back plate. And then you can remove the four torque screws. And now we're ready to swap from the Intel backplate to EK's direct die backplate. The EK badge will be at the top. So uh, these screws are asymmetrical. You can't do it incorrectly, but the EK badge will be at the top of the motherboard. So you can simply pick it up, remove the old one and check there's no insulation left on the back and put the board down onto the new one. You will see the standoffs for the uh, for the block lineup at the exact same time as everything else so it all falls into place and then you can attach your die guard again this is asymmetrical and this will fit with the branding on the right side and then we can reinstall the screws So there we go, with the CPU installed in the socket, you can place on the die guard and then carefully tighten it uh, diagonally in a cross pattern. There is no need for these to be extremely tight and it's a good time to use the uh, EK Torx screwdriver if you have one. 
Otherwise, just nip them up because when the block itself comes on, uh, that's going to push down on the entire assembly. So this doesn't need to be tight for it to function. Uh, it just needs to be secure enough to hold everything together for the rest of the process. Uh, now, it's very difficult that you will do any damage. Everything on the back side and the front side of the motherboard is well protected by all of the components. And it's time to apply the foam and plastic insulation around the socket uh, that will mitigate spillage of any liquid metal from contacting the aluminum parts. Inside the package you will see that there is one small foam and one small plastic sticker. Uh, this plastic sticker is for 12th gen CPUs and you can use it to protect the SMDs which surround the die. Uh, if you have a 13th gen CPU then you can apply the foam directly to the PCB. Uh, obviously for 12th gen the foam will get applied on top of that sticker. Uh, so this should fit just between the die guard and the die. Okay, so now the foam insulation is applied, just pay close attention that it's not gonna get trapped between the die guard and the block, and it's also not gonna get trapped on the die. It should sit nicely in between. It's not a permanent adhesive, so you can reposition it and now we will need to apply a very small amount of liquid metal to the entire surface of the die. The best way to do that is uh, one little drop in the center and then spread it out. So you will want to equip the syringe with the very fine needle. That's all you need to apply the liquid metal and it's best to put one small ball in the middle so you don't push it off the sides and then spread that over the entire surface. Uh, when it looks like you have an even coating, then that should be more than enough. Uh, it's better not to use too much. Now that the liquid metal is applied, we can mount the water block. And we're also gonna put just a tiny bit of conductor knot on the cold plate side to help it spread and keep it inside the footprint of the die itself. So I'll just put a little in the center and then I'm gonna use the uh, protective sticker just for reference of how big the die is uh, because the, the contact patch of the cold plate is quite a bit bigger than the die. So if I spread it on the whole thing, we would make a bit of a mess on the foam uh, so it's going to be resistant to spread for a little bit and then it should hopefully give up and now it's spreading properly it's almost as long as the die probably need to make it just a bit wider I think now it's spread pretty evenly and ready to mount. This is gonna go straight down the standoffs and the cold plate should align simultaneously and then we need to tighten it from the rear. Uh, unlike when using thermal paste, it's very difficult to tell uh, how good a liquid metal application is until you actually use it. The best thing is tighten it as evenly as, possibly, as you possibly could, make sure that it was well spread out beforehand, and then uh, give it a quick check in BIOS, check that all of the cores are a similar temperature and things are under control, and then uh, stress test the system. I'm going to tighten these just a little bit with the screwdriver to keep things securely in place. But, you know, tensioning the screws and using excessive force here isn't actually going to make the contact any better at all like it would with regular thermal paste. As soon as the cold plate hits the die guard, then there's really not possible to apply more pressure to the die itself. Uh, so that's it. This will be exactly the same procedure no matter which Velocity 2 you have, whether it's the limited edition, the 
pre-assembled direct die version or any of the five regular finishes. Even the uh, Lignum Velocity 2 would be exactly the same procedure. And so this is ready to go and test. Uh, now that we've taken a look at all the direct die products, I'm going to show you how to safely install a much less risky ILM replacement option. So this replaces the loading mechanism from Intel uh, with a solid machined aluminum plate, makes everything a lot more rigid and gives you a more consistent application of thermal paste. This is very good if you will mount your cooler repetitively, uh, maybe you're trying different pastes and you have repeated operations which could damage the uh, IHS itself because it bends over time in the stock mechanism. And with that gives you a little performance boost. So first thing is to split this into its two component parts, the backplate and the ILM replacement part. And now we will prepare the motherboard. The safest way, because we'll have to deal with the open socket, is to put the CPU inside and just remember not to turn over the motherboard. So we will position the CPU and now remove the four screws which hold the loading mechanism to the original backplate. So with the loading mechanism off, the backplate will now fall off the motherboard and we can position the new backplate in place. The EK badge will be at the top of the motherboard. You can't put this on backwards because the screws are asymmetrical. Then simply line up all of the holes. All eight holes should line up at the same time and the screws which mount the block will actually come through the motherboard so that can't move. And now we position the ILM replacement bracket. The two logos will be on the right hand side if your motherboard is this way up and it will actually fit around the CPU properly. And then we can cross tighten the screws back down again. It's worth noting that you don't need these really tight because the block itself is going to push everything together at the end when you tighten from behind. They just need to be secure. So if you have a EK Torx screwdriver, this is the perfect time to use it. Just nip them up in an even cross pattern. And there we go. This is now ready to install any uh, EK Velocity 2 LGA 1700 block or any EK Momentum 2. That includes the Lignum block, that includes the uh, DDC Velocity Combo, uh, this will work along with any of those, any products which use the original exact mount backplate, this will now be replaced with the strengthened one and it's ready to go, just with normal thermal paste. Uh, thanks for checking out all of these LGA 1700 products and I hope you get great temperatures on your 12th and 13th gen CPUs with some of these. If you missed the first video where we showed how to delid your CPU, uh, go back and check that out. We'll put the link below. Otherwise, subscribe for all of our other videos and how-to content that's coming up. Bye.